excited to have my next guest on the show. It's Basil Hafez. We'll be fighting next at UFC Vegas 84 on January the 13th when he faces Preston Parsons. Basil, how are you? Good. Good, Ryan. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. And wow, what a UFC debut you had in July. We're, we're going to touch upon that a little bit. But first, just, you know, it's been quite a while since we've seen you compete. So what has life been like for you since? What have you been up to? Oh, man, it's been a whirlwind for sure. Like uh, just taking on all the media stuff and then, uh, you know, seeing all my people and like everyone afterwards. And, uh, you know, now my dream came true, finally being in the UFC. It's just a, it's a great feeling. It's like a blessing. So uh, I'm just happy and I'm excited to just get back to work and just really continue to try and earn my place and earn my meals, you know. So it's just it's I haven't done anything yet. That's my, my mentality. And my, my mentality going into this fight is I still have a lot to prove. So I'm excited for it. <laughs> Well, you know, anyone that follows the the MMA game knows exactly who you are. I mean, you were the champion uh, of a couple very prestigious regional promotions, Fury, CFFC. Do, do you feel like it's about time, like you're getting the respect you deserve? Because a lot of people feel like maybe you should have already been in the position you're in a, a while ago. Yeah, I, I definitely, it's one of those feelings where it's like, man, I'm finally, like I should have been here years ago. But look, I mean, things happen the way they do. And I think even I matured as a fighter and grew as a fighter. Maybe if I got in the UFC uh you know a couple of years ago or five five years ago have been different than me getting in the ufc now obviously record would have been different but um it just overall you know I'm, i i ended up getting there i guess when i got there and uh i'm a much different fighter than i was five six years ago eight years ago three years ago so it's just in general it's 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 i take it i take it in stride and i look at it as a positive Obviously, you know, the last time that, as I mentioned earlier, that we saw you in action was that short notice UFC debut against Jack Della Maddalena. You went in there a pretty sizable dog, and a lot of people think you won the fight. Let's just start there with your reaction. I know you've done a ton of media since then, man, but take me back to that time frame when, when they raised his hands and not yours. What were your immediate feelings? Yeah, it was definitely like uh, heartbreaking at first. It was like, damn, I thought I did enough to win the fight, but I mean, I'm always like, I'm a realist and I, I kind of knew even at that point, like, okay, I could see how they would give it to him because I would get a takedown and I wouldn't do as much. I wouldn't do really much ground and pound. It was more control and the submission attempts. And so I kind of like partially understood, like I could lose this, but at the time, the time of when I'm re like listening to them read the judge's decision, I'm like, oh, I'm getting this fight. It's a split decision. I'm like, I want it. I'm like, how it, like I could, the control time I had was such a massive amount. I'm like, I get like he got the third round, but it's one round. I'm like, but when they read it his way, I was like, you know, okay, I just I had to accept it. It was definitely frustrating. Like, I know obviously I wasn't thinking about it, like, eh, I'm at least I'm in the UFC. No, it was like, damn, I can't believe I just lost, man. I almost beat the number 13 guy in the world, and I almost beat him, and I thought I beat him, and I didn't. And it's like, mm. that's that's what I looked at. I didn't even think about, oh, well, at least I'm here. At least I didn't get finished you know third I made it to the third round I came in with three days notice I cut 30 pounds no none of that was in my mind for me it's like what was the result and so that's what matters the most to me and I do believe in myself being a great fighter and that I'm just the same level and that if I would have had a full camp without having the weight cut I had and being in shape I could finish JDM so in reality I'm just I'm looking at it like man it's a learning lesson to go back and make sure the next time it's more definitive next mm -hmm. time it's more you know like uh, no doubt in the judges you know finish even so yeah that's, that's kind of how i treat that for sure and you know, as you mentioned he's top 15 ranked guy in the division one of the brightest young prospects in the ufc what what did that do for your confidence to to be in there to hang with him where you know again a lot of people thought you won that fight i have to imagine your confidence is at an all-time high now yeah it definitely like uh it helped me my confidence big time man it really does like uh especially because it, it, it's maybe a blessing like i looked already up to like him as a fighter like i already looked at jdm like when i'm i was a person as a fan watching the, the fights i'm like yo this dude's legit that's what i would tell myself this dude has good boxing i mean he has four first round finishes against guys or was it three first round finishes i forget four or three first round finishes against good fight good fighters in the ufc so to me it's like you know i already looked up to him as a fighter and then going in there and trading with him and like you know affirming what i believe that he wasn't going to be able to knock me out i wanted to you know that was a big thing in my mind like even go, going into the fight was like, I want to, I don't think this dude can knock me out. I want to see if he can knock me out. And so to know like, dude, worst weight cut of my life, third round hitting me with the kitchen sink and I'm still standing. And I remember like <laughs> he hit me and I, I'm like, come on, let's go. At one point in the fight where he hit me in the face clean. Like, I don't know, man. It's just, it, it definitely is a big confidence builder. It's a big confidence builder. Like I used to get a lot more nervous. I think going into fights, it's definitely gone down as I've gotten past 
in three fights it's changed each fight uh like tremendously each fight mm-hmm. more it's been less nervousness but like after that fight man i don't know not nervous at all for for preston it's like i just got to go in there and fight like it's sparring like i just if i treat it like the sparring like it's a sparring session and it's a sparring session that matters this is that i just want to perform the best and so that's kind of where my, my mentality is at. Like, I feel like Preston is a good uh, scrappy wrestler, but I feel like I'm a stronger wrestler and a better defender. So I don't think he's going to be able to just take me down at will. Um, he's a brown belt. I'm a first degree black belt. I don't feel like, and I feel like I'm a legit first degree black belt. I mean, I've competed against Gordon Ryan and some of the best guys in the world. So to me, like, and they haven't submitted me. So, so to me, it's like, I feel like I'm better there as well. And so now we're talking about the striking. I think I have knockout power just as much as anyone in the UFC has knockout power. And I have, you know, yeah, I got one KO on my record, but it was a clean KO, and it was just me getting into my own. I've always had knockout power. It just kind of took me understanding what I need to do in the fight, you know, and accept, like, just take it, fall in love with the process and just do, just be a fighter, just fight. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to go in there and put a finish out there. I want to get a finish, and I want to get a bonus, man. That's the goal. So however it comes, I feel like I match up well with Preston Parsons, and I feel like I'm better than him everywhere. So Gordon Ryan didn't submit you. you. You went in there and you rolled with him and yeah, no, no, no submission. Yeah, he we. Wow. So I'll tell you the full the full background. So we went. It was a uh, battle at the beach, Naga, battle at the beach on the east coast. They had it at the Wildwood Convention Center, and I remember um, it was a big division that day. It was like DJ Jackson, who I fought in MMA as well. It was like Gary Tonin, Gordon Ryan. There's a bunch of names there at this tournament because it was a bunch of East Coast guys, really. They're all East Coast guys. And I'm doing the absolute absolute uh, black belt division. I'm a purple belt at the time, and I didn't know he was a brown belt, right? So I jump in the division. He was the first person. First ma- first match of the bracket is Gordon Ryan. At the time, I didn't know who the hell Gordon Ryan was. Like, this is like, you know, he was a brown belt that was killing it. Everybody knew who he was. I had no idea. I didn't even know what belt he was. I'm just like, oh, this dude, Gordon Ryan, whatever. I didn't have a coach with me, mind you. I just go, I just showed up basically. It was like, I'm just going to compete. So I go and he's my first match. We slap hands. He's got John Dan- Danaher in his corner or his people in his corner. And I got nobody. I'm just there myself. <laughs> I think actually funny, <clears throat> funny story. I mentioned him in another interview. Will Martinez was there because he had guys from Martinez BJJ. He's he's a Philly guy as well. He's a black belt. He had guys there. I think in the middle of me about to compete, like he just saw me and was like, yo, I'll, I'll hang out. I'll corner you and I'll help out. And he just came and helped out and just sat there and like, uh, you know, would like shout things at me, whatever he thought that, that we he would see. But so I went in there with Gordon Ryan, and I remember I would I kept passing his guard. I kept passing his guard, and then he would have a good recycle to be able to recycle my leg back to get control of it. And so in Naga, you get points for uh, slapping on a submission attempt, or even if like you leg lace a leg, you get one point for every leg lace. So he would lace my leg, get a point. I would pull out defend the submission and then we did that uh it was two uh, three times total so two times i don't know why i'm getting a notification on my screen sorry oh, <laughs> like, i'm not worst timing so uh basically he gets he gets two uh submission attempt points so it's two nothing right now right um and then i pass his guard one more time and he locks in a full-on fit like a full-on uh a leg lock position where he has the heel hook and he has the heel exposed and he has my heel exposed and he's like cranking it. Right. He's cranking the heel hook. I mean, it's, it's tight. It's like, you know, I'm like, okay, this, my shit could tear if I don't fight out of this, but I fought out of it. I remember like turning, spinning, pushing on his butt and like getting my knee line above the butt, above the, the hips. And I got my, I got my leg out. It was deep. It was really deep, but then I got it out. You know, I defended it. So now he's up for nothing. I pass his guard. Um, fully and get settled now it's two points you get two points for passing the guard so it's four to two i'm throwing submission attempts to this guy he's defending every one of them boom time runs out and uh you know that a lot lost four to two man and i was like <laughs> at the time i was like yeah whatever and then i go up to him afterwards and we're talking and he's like man how the hell did you get out of that heel that shit was so freaking tight i'm like man i don't know i just fought i was like uh, are you doing gi and he's like yeah and he pulls out his brown belt and i was like oh you're a brown belt I'm like shit so I'm not gonna get to compete against this guy again. So that was my one and only shot. I didn't get I didn't get the win. I got lost. I lost to him. So you know, respect to the goat. But I definitely would love to at one point run that back. I know he's yeah. obviously a lot better, and so have I. So but whatever. No, no doubt. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that if this fight with Preston goes to the ground and you have to use your jujitsu, you're feeling pretty darn confident about it. Hey man, I'm confident as can be. I'm the kind of guy I'll die on my sword if I need to. He's gonna have to choke me out cold. But i I mean, I think Evan Cuts is one of the best. Uh, MMA grapplers that I fought. I mean, like, yeah, he's in the regional, but like, he is 
in my opinion, one of the toughest SOBs and one of the best. He's a second degree black belt, so he's technically above me. He's one of the toughest black belts that I've competed against. And he's like MMA Jiu Jitsu is really good. And he mm -hmm. caught me in deep submissions where like if you watch the film, you're like, this dude's about to tap. But I got out of it, you know. So like to me, you gotta kill me on that. You got I'm 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 not gonna tap from nothing. You gotta break it, kill me. Like that's the that's my mentality. That's how I came up. And that's, you know, under Ricardo Miglaris. I got my black, my first three black belt from Ricardo Miglaris in Philadelphia. And that's how he kind of like, we came up together that, that same way. I like, he, ta he taught me that way. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see you back in there, man. And and I know January 13th, it's a little ways away now, but just, I, I know you're in the, the middle of camp. How has it been thus far? I know you got some monsters around you in Colorado. Uh, who have you been working with the most here to get you ready for Preston? Oh man, I've been working with just as many bodies as I can. Like, uh, to me, I'm like, I'm not like a person where like, okay, this fight I'm going to do, I'm going to try and just do this. It's like, okay, what, what works the best in this fight? And we'll work that around my game and I'll just continue to do my game. And so, I mean, I do my continue, I continue to grapple as much as I normally do. Like I train with a lot of high level black belts. Um, my training partners are really good wrestlers and MMA wrestlers as well. So I'm getting rounds with them. I'm doing gauntlet sessions where they're trying to take me down as many times as they can. And a fresh guy every minute, like, you know, that's, that's the training you got to do. So I'm just doing the same kind of like, you know, hard training that I've been doing and I'm just ramping it up. You know, to me, I'm treating every fight like a title fight, like a, like a regional title fight. Every fight now is a regional title fight. That's the preparation. That's why I'm happy with the full camp. I'm happy with the, the amount of time that I have because it gives me the ability to shut down every single thing he does come fight night. You know? Do you get much work in with Brandon Gertz? No, uh, Brandon Gertz trains at Genesis. I know uh, of Brandon. We never actually officially trained together. I think we've been in the same corner rooms, okay. I mean, like for uh, different fighters and different purposes. But um, I know of Brandon. I know he's a great fighter. Mm -hmm. He uh, does BKFC, right? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. former Bellator, now BKFC. I, I, I saw some pictures, and I thought maybe that you guys had uh, intertwined and trained a little bit together. I, I know him pretty well. He's, he's a really good guy. You, I mean, again, yes. I mean, yeah. Gage, you got the Kamaru, uh, Kamaru and Muhammad Usman out there. Kamaru, the, Kamaru, they, the Kamaru and Muhammad, they kind of went back to uh, – I mean, it was great training with Kamaru, and I love training with him when he comes up, but he went back to uh, Florida and is at Kill Cliff now. Okay. For the most part, yeah. So mainly, I would say like most of my training partners are like um, like the guys I train with on a regular basis are like re more regional guys, but they're very good regional guys. Um, like just tough, really tough fighters and really good in their own right, striking, wrestling, jiu jitsu. And then I also have the you know the high level guys like that are at elevation, like Neil, Justin, right. uh, the heavier weight guys too that are you know fighting for one or fighting for different companies. So there's a lot of really good bodies. I mean, like. If unless you're, and then it's like, unless you're saying like a, a UFC name that's like a household name, people are like, oh, you're not really training with, you know, but like, dude, there's a reason why Kamaru came out here and I'm out here now. It's, there's a lot of really good minds and bodies. And, uh, you know, it's just going to be a matter of time before all these guys are in the next level. They're in the UFC, they're at the higher level. And, you know, some guys, a lot of the guys are too in Bellator. A lot of these guys are already in Bellator or regional promotions. So it's like, or not regional, uh, you know, larger scale promotions. Yeah. So we have a lot of great, Great bodies, man, especially welterweights. We have a lot of welterweights and 85ers and, and lightweights. And so I get – there's never a, there's never a chance where I, I can not have enough work. That's something I'm not really worried about. You know, it's Colorado like is a great place yeah. to be. What, what do you like to do to kind of decompress and take your mind off of MMA? Do you have any hobbies that you like to do, uh, get out uh, in, in the wilderness out there in Colorado? Like what else do you get into? <laughs> yeah i mean it's hard not to get out and do hikes out here because it's so beautiful like the mountains is just like surreal to, to climb a mountain and look down the view sometimes like similar to like a skydiving type of vibe but uh yeah i'd say when i'm in camp it's more whatever training and then if i have energy after training then i'll i'll do that but for now it's been just hanging playing with my dog you know hanging out with him taking him out on, on different things and then like you know i play call of duty i hang out play call of duty and just chill I don't do much, man. Mm -hmm. I'm really, I'm like hyper-focused. I like go training. I train two or three times a day. I go to training. I eat. I take a nap in between sessions. That's something that is big. And I think Khabib even talked about that in some interviews. A lot of guys talk about rest. And then on the rest day, they're doing this or doing that. Or No, rest is like sleep, man. You need to like sleep and nap and, rest and get your body to recover as much as it can, like rejuvenate the battery. So I'll just literally spend most of my days are just train. It's sleep, <laughs> eat train and then rest again to sleep between training eat again and then train again and then if i have energy for anything outside afterwards i might just 
watch something on TV, maybe watch a TV show or something, go back to sleep and do the same thing the next day. Very Fair boring enough. lifestyle, but now you got to do boring things to be great. Yeah, well, hey, no doubt about it. You're clearly on the right track right now. Uh, with you know Thanksgiving in the rear of your mirror, did you get to eat whatever you wanted to though? I mean, the fight's still a ways away. I'm sure you got to eat enough. Yeah, I, I'm a disciplined guy. I like to say disciplined, but I did go to my barber hit me up, and he's like, "Yo, come through the fam's house." So I went through his family's house, and uh, I got like a little, you know, plate of uh, all the little things that get your mind off the off the off the unhealthy eating. <laughs> you know, a little green bean casserole, a little bit of sweet potatoes, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, turkey, gravy, mashed potatoes. So I didn't overindulge, but I had a little bit of everything I needed to. Yeah, I mean, I'd say I'm pretty good, man. I'm pretty good on my my diet in general. Like my weight stays. Uh, once I get into camp, my weight drops pretty fast and, uh, I got a pretty good metabolism. So if I want to eat some little bit of cheat thing, I do, but I don't know. I gain something for me. I gain a lot. And just the discipline makes the mm -hmm. meal afterwards much better. And it makes what I'm doing more valuable. I feel like, so a lot of times my friends will be like, dude, your weight's good. You can go out here and you can eat there. I'm like, uh, when it comes to a certain time frame, I'm like, nope, I'm not going out. I'll see you. I'll see you after the fight. <laughs> yeah. What are you like? 190 right now? Uh, 191, 192. Okay. That's, I was 192 that's yesterday. So I didn't weigh myself this morning, but I trained hard yesterday. Who knows? I fluctuate. All yeah. right. Well, let's talk about Preston Parsons. You already did a little bit, man. Uh, UFC Vegas 84, January the 13th. You're going to be back at the apex. Is, is that disappointing though, to be fighting at the apex? Were you wishing that maybe you were going to be like someplace else with a bunch of screaming fans? Yeah, I definitely want to fight with fans. Like I want to feel what that's like to fight with the UFC fans. I feel like I'll get them riled up. I feel like I'm the kind of fighter they want to get behind, but I, I can't control, man. I can't control that. And I'm not really, it's not really a bad thing. Fighting at the Apex is cool, man. It's like, uh, it reminds you kind of almost like a more regional show because it's a smaller room. It's not a big arena. Um, but I don't know, wherever I fight, like I'm the kind of person that like, if they want to put me in front of a screaming fans, like the fans are going to go nuts. If they put me in front of the people at the Apex, everyone sitting inside the Apex is going to go nuts. And the people at home are going to go nuts. So I'm not, I'm indifferent. Like, mm -hmm. Wherever they say, yo, this is this is where the fight's gonna take place and this is who you're fighting, I'm like, all right, let's go. Like this is that's the mentality now. I'm not really in the spot to be like or or even earn my place to be like, I wanna fight here and I wanna fight here. And you know, a lot of guys too, they get caught up, man. They come in and they maybe have a they have a great debut fight or they have a good fight, and then they start to like like pick start pick things. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, and then they become all pristine. It's like I don't give a shit about none of that right now, man. I just want to fight. I want to fight. I want to get my contract money to be higher <laughs> and just keep fighting until it's as high as it can be so that I can retire and leave a legacy behind and not have to stress about bills one day. So that's yeah. the goal. I love it. Preston's one and two in the UFC doing tape study. What, what, what do you think you're going to see from him come fight night? Um, You know, I, I'm going to, I'm going to see what I think what he showed a lot of his, his past three fights. He's uh he's a guy that likes to use his striking to get takedowns and try and pin you against the cage or get a rest, get a, get a position to control you and win the fight in that position. So my goal is going to be able to neutral. My goal is going to be to neutralize him from doing those positions or trying to take me down or trying to control me, just break off. And, uh, and if I want to take him down, take him down, not have him take me down. And so, yeah, I'm doing a lot of wrestling, man, just getting ready for the up downs. I know it's going to be a lot of up downs with him. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully I come in and I can't catch him on the first exchange and he gets knocked out. If not, you know, then I'm ready for, uh, the up downs that are going to come and be able to try and knock him out after the up downs or take him down after he tries to take me down. You know I mean? I'm ready for anything. I'm not a believer in like <laughs> saying my exact game plan on uh, interviews, but I always am trying to go for the finish. And so that's not more apparent than ever. I think I'm going to, I'm going to go try for the, go for the finish and, and try and get a KO TKO or submission. You're going to be disappointed if it goes the distance and, and you, as yes. long as you win. Yeah, okay. Yes. You're going to I I personally believe that I have what it takes to finish him. Look, if I if it goes the distance and it's like a fight of the night, yeah, that's not a bad thing. You know, uh, I'm not complaining. But I I want to finish everyone. I want to finish every guy I fight. Every fighter wants should want to finish every guy they want to they fight. So to me, it's like I want to finish him. If and if I don't finish him in the distance and I win by decision, I won't be content with that. No, I'm gonna be honest with you. I want to finish him. So that's my goal. And it's not something. It's like I gotta. I got to run in there and just punch as hard as I can, as fast as I can. No, it's a fight. You're going to guess out. You play the fight as it goes. But I believe in the exchanges. I can definitely capitalize on his mistakes that he makes. And uh, I really believe he does. He can't take my power. So I'm excited to prove that on fight night.
Can't wait to see you back in there, man. Again, January the 13th, UFC Vegas 84. Basil Havas back in action against Preston Parsons. Great talking to you again, man. It's been far too long. Hopefully we can do it again sooner rather than uh, it was this last time. Before we do sign off, I want to give you the floor. If there's anyone you want to thank, uh, anything you want to plug, the floor is yours. Yeah, I appreciate you taking me on the show or having me on the show again, uh, Ryan. Thank you for you know taking the time interviewing me. I, I want to thank my sponsors. I don't, well, I don't really have sponsor sponsors like I used to, but um, I want to thank well, so I want to thank my gym, pound for pound Muay Thai. I want to thank my fight team, Elevation Fight Team. Uh, I want to thank Eastern Training Center. I want to thank High Altitude Martial Arts. I want to thank Barbers Colorado. Um, and then I did do a breast cancer event recently where I raised uh, forty three hundred dollars to help families fighting breast cancer, um, and that's going to be donated through a company called uh, Sense of Security. They help, uh, you know, basically break up the money and, and give it to families that are in need for the holidays that don't have money for food and bills and things like that. Um, so I want to thank all the sponsors that helped me raise money with that. And they, they helped with the breast cancer event. Um, Candace Rosin Treats, JB Health and Associates, um, uh, Delco Steaks, Dependable Solutions, um, Technic, Technic Air Mechanical, More Homes Colorado. Uh, I want to thank all those guys, uh, you know, and, uh, and plus, you know, my coaches and my training partners, thank them for helping me prepare for this fight.